So I live in the back of my van and this is my kitchen. And this is a professional Michelin star kitchen. And today we're gonna be driving into DC to meet up with my friend Kyle, who is a Michelin star chef. And he's gonna be leaving his fancy professional kitchen to come cook a Michelin star meal in the back of my van with just about 20 inches of counter space. So hopefully we can do it and hopefully he can show me some tips on how to be a better cook. So before we cook anything in the back of my van, we're heading to DC right now to meet up with Kyle at his restaurant where he's gonna show us a few things in his professional kitchen. And then we're gonna go ingredient and shopping, get everything we need to cook our meals. And then we're coming back to the van to cook hopefully a Michelin star gourmet three course meal. All right, we've made it to the restaurant, just down the street up there. So I'm walking over to his restaurant now. He's gonna let me in some sort of back door into the kitchen, and then we're gonna see what his kitchen looks like and then prep some stuff there before we actually go into the van. What's up? How's it going? So how long have you been a uh, chef for? Out of culinary school, eight years about. Uh, eight years about out of culinary school in Michelin restaurants. How long have you been working at this restaurant? This one about going on two and a half years now. Ooh. <laughs> Much nicer than the van. Right oh, so this is where people sit. People sit here and these tools are here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they watch you cook everything. They is that intimidating? Yeah, in, in a weird way it feels like a zoo animal, but it's, yeah. it's kind of fun. I can barely cook in the van when I'm just just sitting in there by myself. I can't imagine it's having a bunch of Michelin star diners <laughs> watching me cook my entire meal. It's very intimidating, but it's fun. This is your restaurant's little Michelin man? Yes, Bibindum is his name. His restaurant has two Michelin stars, correct? Yes. Very fancy. So uh, we're gonna be cooking three courses tonight. Uh, most of them are gonna be in the van, most of their production, but we're gonna cook a few things here. It's okay. just a little bit easier to cook in the restaurant itself. Uh, we're essentially going to make like somewhat of a cl clarified blueberry jelly. Okay. Uh, we're going to make a green basil oil, and, and then uh, for the dessert, we're going to make like a little bit of like a lemon sherbet. We're going to use the ice cream machine downstairs to make that. So, okay. Let's do it. So we can essentially weigh out our blueberries here. Oh. Yeah. So about 280. So 15 percent. That's like 42. Oh. But it's 64. Right. 60. That's fine. <laughs> we'll go for 20 percent around there. Okay. blueberries are working, we're going to start working on our green oil, our basil oil here. Okay. So you can start to pick the basil leaves individually and start to drop them into here. So how much am I going for in here? All of it. Just pick all, all of the basil. This kind of cooking is a lot more precise than what I do. I usually just eyeball everything. And while I'm over here doing this, Kyle's over there prepping some ingredients and weighing out some stuff for the lemon sorbet. Uh, so we're going to start the basil oil here. So Ryan picked all of the basil into here. I don't really trust him to deal with hot oil, so I'm going to do this. It doesn't look very appetizing. This is uh, a lot of army green mush here. And we're going to strain this through a little bit of a cloth and then the result should be a nice dark green oil. Don't waste any of it. Oh. So this is what we're looking for, this green oil coming out of the bottom? Exactly. So what are we doing now? So we're gonna start the sorbet base. Okay. You can put those into the pot and you're gonna start a syrup and you're gonna boil that. Okay. Water and sugar first? Water and sugar first to make the syrup. Okay. Water and the first. Sugar. Yep, you can put the water in. Pot's a little warm, so we'll keep it up. Ooh. So getting all that in there, bringing it to a boil essentially. Can you stir Stir it or no? Together, please? Yeah, you could whisk it. Now that the water is boiling, you can add your stabilizer. Okay, and what is the stabilizer? So the stabilizer essentially, it just helps with the, like not uh, creating ice in the sorbet itself. You know, when you eat ice cream and like, it sits in the, in the freezer so like for a long time. So it's like homogenous? Essentially, so it's homogenous. So okay. when it freezes, that it's a smooth texture. This is a stabilized liquid that we are going to then use for the ice cream once it is cooled down. Try not to get your finger. All right, now that takes five minutes to cool down. And then we're gonna add these things and kind of just like whisk it in there. What are these things? milk and lemon juice. So while we're waiting for the uh, ice cream mixture to cool down, we're gonna finish off the green oil that we were working on before. Uh, it's been straining now for about 45 minutes, so it should be, should be in a good spot. It's pretty much dried, all of the oil is dripped out of it. Such green oil. 
That's so crazy. So green oil, done. Next thing here, we're going to set up to strain the blueberries off. So we can grab the pot. Okay. Please don't drop it. And then we're <laughs> going to strain it through here. So you can pour it all through this. Okay. And essentially all of that heat has softened the blueberries. Sugar itself helps as well, soften them and extract all the juice from them. We don't want to push anything through because then that would create like pulp uh -huh. and like muddy liquid essentially it would be called. So if you look at it now, it looks a lot clearer than it does in this pint. Yeah, it does. And this is essentially what we will take, put it on the stove, uh, bring it up to a boil and then set a little bit of gelatin in it to make it like the jelly. All right, so now that this ice cream base has been cooled down, we can pour it into a larger pot so we can actually incorporate the uh, milk and heavy cream and a little bit of lemon juice as well. Okay. So this is, this is the thing that was, that was cooling down on the stove that we made the ice cream mixture. How's my technique? It's all right. Doing well for a van cook. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now that that's all in there, we can pour it off into another container or take this downstairs and we'll put it into the ice cream machine to start churning it. Sweet. So this is like unfrozen ice cream right now. And Kyle made a batch of the stuff that we made for the ice cream, this stuff, last night because this is technically supposed to set in a fridge overnight, which obviously we don't have overnight. So he made a batch yesterday in preparation for this um, and he's gonna let this one freeze for, for tomorrow. Yeah, so now we have that blueberry water essentially in this pot here. We're going to bloom a little bit of gelatin, uh, which has already been done. And then we are going to essentially drop that into this blueberry mixture. So this is the gelatin that we're putting in the uh, blueberry mixture that we made in the beginning. And it's going to turn it into jelly. Jelly. Or gel, jello, essentially. Jelly going in. Now you can whisk it in there. The gelatin will dissolve and then- Oh wow, it dissolves yep, so quick. It's gone, right? Yeah. Um, so now that it's activated in there, uh, with gelatin you cannot reheat it. So this now needs to be poured off into this pint container and then we will cool this down. It will set around room temperature, gelatin fully, and then we can set it in the fridge so it can set a little bit harder as well. So now that we've got everything done, cleaning some stuff up, Kyle's helping me, or I'm helping Kyle. We've got our green oil, we've got our blueberry reduction jelly setting. All right, so we are downstairs in another kitchen now. Kyle has got the batch of ice cream mixture that he made yesterday and let it set overnight. And now we're gonna throw it in the machine and hopefully turn it into ice cream. This is a lot different than the uh, ice cream I made in a bowl in the desert. Ice cream. So you can see the ice cream coming out the top there, this little hole, looks like an ice cream turd. Really good. <laughs> Stunning. All right, so we've got our ice cream, we've got our green oil, we've got everything we need. Now we just gotta pick up the rest of the groceries and find a spot to cook. All right, so we came to Union Market to get all of our produce and other things that we need to cook dinner tonight. Well, this is where we're gonna get our produce, but it is closed. So we're gonna have to go somewhere else to get that, but we should be able to get everything else here. Whole lot of meat. Get a whole small chicken, I'll show you to break one down. Okay. Thank you. So we got everything we need from, or everything we could get from Union Market. The produce section was closed, so we weren't able to get that. We'll have to go somewhere else to get that later. But before we leave, there is a knife store here. And since I'm with a chef, I figured I will get a nice knife from my kitchen so I can upgrade from my current uh, $20 knives. Appreciate it. Have a good one. You too. What was your name? Pete. Pete? Ryan. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. Alright, so I just walked out with Kyle and then told him I had to go to the bathroom because uh, he was pointing at one of these knives in here that he really wants to get, so I'm going to get it for him. Yeah, this one right here. Thank you. Alright, I got it. And I hid it in this little bag and I got a breakfast sandwich too. I'm going to give it to him at the end of the video. Hopefully he likes it. Alrighty. Next stop? TJ Farms. <laughs>
And this is it, TJ's Farms. So is there anything specific you look for when you're looking for produce and stuff or no? Uh, quality, no blemishes, just like the firmness of it or the softness of it or the ripeness and things like that. Watching a master at work. If nothing else, this just shows you that you can make gourmet food from anything, even to Trader Joe's. All right, hopefully we have everything we need. Suck it out there. <laughs> Realize we don't have something in the van. So now that we finished cooking in Kyle's nice kitchen, he gets a taste of the uh, van life. We pulled up to this spot here, right on the side of the National Mall. That's one of the museums. That's also one of the museums. And then you can actually see the uh, Washington Monument from here, but we're opening a Michelin star van restaurant right here on the side of the road. There she is. It's not a lot, but it'll do. <laughs> Beautiful kitchen. Now we can get to cooking. It's a little, uh, little cramped in here though, but we do have, look at this. So much more counter space. <laughs> it doubles. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's start cooking. Alrighty, chef. Come on in. How tall are you? Six two and a half. <laughs> Not too tall. Yeah. Right in here. But yeah. Be all right. I think my ceiling's six one. You're just too tall for the. <laughs> you're just too tall for the roof. <laughs> all right. That's crazy. Maybe this will make me a better chef. Uh, should definitely make you more careful. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. So Probably very sharp. You're all right, let's get to cooking. But before we get started cooking this or anything else, we gotta get all chefed up. Kyle's is a little bit more professional than mine and not sharpied on. Got my little wipe here boxes. And then, you guys wear these, right? No. No chef wears these? Uh, maybe somewhere, but not here. Well, I do, so I'm gonna wear it. All right. What's first? The veggies for the fumet. So, or the, we're actually going to do the raft first. Okay, you need a cutting board? We'll do a cutting board, yeah. Show you how to use your new knife. Yes. You need to uh, do it with paper towel. <sighs> yes. Are you doing the white paper towel trick? Underneath of the cutting board? I've seen, okay, I've gotten a lot of comments from people telling me that I should put a white paper towel under my cutting board to keep it from moving, but I thought it was a gimmick. Nope. I guess not. Keeps Prevents it from moving? moving. Okay. Yes. Well, it aids in not moving. Essentially, this is all going to be turned into what is called a raft. Okay. So we were getting our vegetables, our aromatics cut down, and then we're going to put them into the blender and kind of mix them up a little bit so that we can clarify our fumet. So how am I cutting this? Into any size chunk you would like. Should I cut off the end? Yes. So it's nice. So just cut it like this and then it chunks? Yep. We'll probably only use half of that for this purpose right now. How's my cutting technique? Uh, it's okay. That, it doesn't really matter for this one. That's what's nice about it. Is that good? I don't, I don't have to, yeah. And then the top you can, for this purpose, we'll, we'll get rid of it. We can okay. use them. Uh, and then this you can cut up into more chunks. This knife is so sharp. I feel like you're going to be really careful with this. I'm going to like cut my hand off. It's like a lightsaber. It cuts through like butter. You can use this one for your actual vegetables that we will then blend. How's this, chef? It looks good. Perfect. The best part about it is that we're going to blend it, so okay. it doesn't matter too much. <laughs> the onion's getting cut into chunks too? Yes. Beautiful. So I can put these in with the... Uh... Yep, that'd be great. We got that. Okay. We'll take the bottom off this mataki mushroom. We use a little bit of this in there as well. So in here right now we've got onions, fennel, garlic, and then mataki mushrooms. Yeah, and some right. thyme in there. And now... We can set up a blender. I'm, I skipped a step. Okay. I'm gonna show you how to break down a chicken. And this is gonna be what part of the dish? So, the consomme, the clarification of this fume, needs protein. And this is the fume. This is the fume. So this is the fume. We need protein to clarify this fume, which will make... The consomme. Consomme. There you go. What made you want to be a chef? You know, there's a lot of a lot of back and forth with actual college, um, and I always enjoyed cooking. I was in the kitchen a lot with my mom when I was growing up. I would try to take things from her. I would watch a lot of uh, Alton Brown back in the day on uh -huh. Good Good Eats. Okay. Uh, he kind of did a lot for me there. Also, uh, Emeril Lagasse did a lot back in the day, talking about you know 
all the cooking and how like you can how there is like a future and a career to it yeah. rather than just like doing it for fun that's you know? pretty cool but cooking is you still definitely fun found a daily. future and a career in it <laughs> <laughs> all right now we'll get the blender going okay we can get this in here we'll clean that we shouldn't we will need that to cut the fish later on but that's about it so now that we've got everything pretty much processed we've got our chicken we've got our blender mix of vegetables and herbs Last thing we got to do before we can put this into the blender is separate some egg whites. So we're going to do that now. All right. So separating eggs. You done it? Yeah. You. I'll do it. I'll do it how I did it, and then you show me if I'm wrong. Okay. Okay. So this is how I typically separate an egg. Crack it. Split it open. A little bit open there. That's how I typically right. do it. So unfortunately, for this procedure, we can't have any yolk. No yolk. Okay. No yolk at all. Let me try again. Let me try again. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, I can get that out. That's one way to separate a yolk. There you go. So how do you do it? Crack an egg on an egg. Surfaces are unsanitary. Okay. Oh, so it's like kind of similar to what I did, other than cracking an egg on an egg. Yeah. So now we have all of our, what is called mise en place in this situation. So now we can hit the blender. Mise en place. Mise en place? Mise en place. Mise en place. Everything in place. Everything in place. We get first thing in is chicken. We'll essentially blend this until it turns into like more of a paste. And then we will take that, add a little bit of vegetables in to kind of add some aromatics. And then add in our egg yolks right at the end there. Let's get this going on the back right burner. It's the best place for it. All right, so now that we've got that on the heat, we're adding some of those vegetables and herbs that we cut up before into the blender. So we jammed as much stuff as we can in there from our pot of things. So is there a reason that you didn't put the egg whites in first? Yeah, you don't want to like aerate it. So if you whip egg whites, obviously like you're uh, adding air to them and that's how you make like meringues and things okay. like that. So it doesn't aid in anything and I don't really think it hurts in any way, but it's just the steps and the procedure of it. So. Okay. I trust you. So now that everything's all blended up, we can add the egg whites. Now we're going to take this, the raft is what it's called. We're going to take this out. doesn't look very appetizing, I know. So what are we doing with this? We will slowly start to stream this in while we mix it. And essentially it'll create a raft. That's why it's called a raft. It'll create like what is like a pillow or a raft on top of all of it. Okay. Essentially starting to cook the chicken and the egg whites. Uh, and essentially it gathers all of the impurities from the sauce or the stock itself. And then clarifies the sauce. Bunch of chef stuff. But this is what that mixture looks like now. It's like a baby food type of paste. Let's try to be stirring the water. I have so much. I forget that. Yeah, word of man. <laughs> All right, so I messed up and the fume is not supposed to be brought to a boil. I left the burner on for too long. So we're going to let this cool down a little bit before we add in the chicken and then we're going to start with the tomato water for the appetizer. All right, so we have a little bit of onions and garlic left over from making our raft for the consomme. Okay. We are going to use that and make a little bit of tomato water. So we got these tomatoes essentially just taking them off the vine here and then we will put them into our blender blend them up and then strain the liquid that is going to come off of them after we also clean the blender too so there's no chicken juice left <laughs> just want to put that out there so this is going to make our tomato water which is going to be what part it's going to be part of the appetizer yes what part of the appetizer it is going to be the sauce for the appetizer essentially we also add a little bit of salt and uh some sugar in there all right now that it is thoroughly mixed we are going to take it off and then we're going to strain this and let it drip through a cheesecloth. We're taking this and we're pouring it through this cheesecloth, which should give us the other part of our consomme. Yep, so we're straining off all of the bits here. So there's going to be no pulp, essentially. We are, uh, this will drip into what is going to be somewhat of a clear liquid. So that's what we're collecting, that clear water coming from this stuff. So we've got our tomato water filtering out over there and now we're gonna take this chicken, blend it up, add it to our fume. That should hopefully take it from this cloudy mess that it is and clarify it down so the chicken soaks up all the uh, impurities. And, chicken uh, soaks up all the impurities and like filters it out or something like that. Close enough. So just mix it in? Yep. Just like slowly add it in and then you want to mix it as you're adding it in. So now what we're going to do 
bring the heat up a little bit. So we'll bring it to a simmer. Uh, it should never fully boil. So we're gonna bring it to a simmer and essentially create the raft and start to purify and so clarify the sauce. What are you saying with the raft is there's gonna be a raft of egg whites and chicken that'll form on the top and kind of filter all of that cloudiness out and we'll get a clear liquid when it's done. Gentle stir on this every once in a while, just so the bottom doesn't scorch. Just wait for that to come up to a simmer. Okay, and while we're waiting for that, we're gonna start prepping the main ingredients for our dish. Swordfish and... The tuna. So we're doing a tuna appetizer, a swordfish main, and then we have that ice cream coming out for dessert. Beautiful. So we're basically gonna take this swordfish and tuna, and we're gonna portion them out for each of the dishes in the way that Kyle tells me to. Before we do that, you can see the raft is starting to form on the top here filtering it out and making that liquid a little bit clearer, but still got a little more time on that. My idea was that we were going to take, I want to create this as a bar on its own. Okay. So this from here on. So like, so like, it like, in a, like yep. in a strip? So then we'll trim off a little bit of the bloodline here. So a straight cut there. We'll take this whole one. You can trim off, trim off a little bit of here. So trim it where? Trim it right there. All right, so this here is the piece that we're going to be cooking at the end. This is essentially closest to the belly, so it will have the most amount of fat in it. Okay. So it will turn out to be the better piece of fish for us there. Fish trimmed. So our liquid is getting way clearer, if you can see that. When he scoops it out, there's no more impurities in it, which is exactly what we're looking for. So this is coming along nicely, and we're kind of getting to the point where we're gonna be almost done here. Pretty much the only thing we have left to do is cook this, because I'm pretty sure we're doing raw tuna. Yes. Which is something I'm not very fond of, but we're gonna try it out and hopefully Kyle can change my mind. This right here is the tuna. We're gonna prep this into very thin like, slivers and that's gonna be the raw portion of the appetizer, right? Mm -hmm. The raw portion of the appetizer. So about a fourth of an inch thick slices is what we're going for. So like something like that? Yeah, just a little bit more even. Yeah, okay, so it's a little, un little uneven on the slice there. So use the full length of the blade. You shouldn't just use the middle, when, especially when you're slicing raw fish. How should I hold this? Knife holding, right? You're either pinching the top of the blade or you're going one finger on the top of the blade, thing, thumb on the side. And what you're doing, right? I always like to put my finger on the top when I slice crudo. I just think it's a more comfortable motion for me. It's one solid one, slice. One fluid slice. Yeah, so you're not, there's no back and forth, nothing like that. Your knife should be sharp enough, which it's brand new, so it will be, but you should get one fluid motion sliced through the piece of fish. Okay. Oh, much better. Oh, it's a little, a little off. There we go. That's a good slice. Beautiful. And there are all of our tuna slices. How's the uh, fromage coming? Uh, it's a consomme. What's it called? Consomme. That's a consomme? No, it's a consomme. It was okay. a fumet before, and then oh, the wrap. Fume. Fume is the fish stock. The raft is the, the chicken, the white, and then consomme is what we're making. Okay, so much clearer, you can see it. So I think our tomato water has finished straining. Got a bunch in there, that should be enough. Now we can take this and essentially do the same thing with that. So this is our tomato water and we're setting it aside in this bowl. And then we're gonna strain out our consomme into the same container with the same setup we used for that. So we're gonna take, take the spoon, essentially, and you need to, at this point, the raft is formed, so you don't wanna break the raft. You break the raft, all of the impurities get back into it. Okay. So at this point, you're just gently scooping some of this consomme out and then pouring it through the cheesecloth here. Okay. So I'll let you do the next couple. So just very gently, you don't want to break any of the raft because if you do, it'll be cloudy again. But right now, it looks like. Could you cook the raft into like a chicken patty? No. You can. It's already cooked. The whole thing is cooked. It's uh, edible. It's just not, not very it's good. not desirable. Are we taking all of it? Get as much as you can out of it. You try not to get a little bit of the bottom because it will start to cloud up okay. the more and more you strain out of it. So now we should have a nice clear looking liquid. It's way clearer than it was when it started. So I don't know if you guys can tell on the camera, but you can see the bottom now, very clear. And now that we have this, we pretty much have everything in parts for what we need. Last thing we gotta do is season this, and then we're gonna finish off by cooking that swordfish up. So what we're adding to this right now is so, Ichiban dashi. Ichiban, yeah. Ichiban dashi. Ichiban dashi is essentially a kombu dashi. So you steep kombu in with a little bit of soft water. 
Okay. And then you'll sit that for about an hour or two or overnight cold. And then... And this is something you prepared before? This is something that I prepared before. Okay. It takes... This takes overnight as well. Okay. Uh, so I did a cold steep with kombu overnight and then I took it off and then brought it up to about 160 to 180 degrees. Then I steeped in a little bit of bonito flakes. Okay. So after that, strain that out and then it becomes this nice, clear, very umami forward broth that is very nice for seasoning sauces and things that are light in flavor like this consomme. Also using a little bit of yandu. Yandu is a vegetable uh, umami seasoning, gluten-free of like soy sauce and things like that. Okay. It brings a lot of umami. Yandu. That's yes. what we're putting in there. And that's it? That's it. So now we just gotta cook up the swordfish? That's it. We're in the home stretch. This hat is like constricting my brain waves. So tight. So, last piece. Swordfish. Kyle's got a handful of salt in his hand that he scooped out of my salt shaker. <laughs> We're coating this thing very evenly on all sides, I'm guessing. Yes. Is that the only seasoning going on there? Yep. Shouldn't need anything else. So now what are we doing with this? Cutting it up? This? Nope. We're going to keep that whole, let the salt penetrate for a little bit, leave that for about five to ten minutes. We're going to preheat our cast iron in that time as well. So just lay it in there. Okay. All right. Swordfish going in. Ooh. I'm guessing we're just going to sear this on all sides? Sear it on all sides and then just like gently let it come up to temp. Beautiful. It's nice having someone to help me cook for once. <laughs> Especially when it's a uh, chef that works in a Michelin star restaurant. Look at that. Beautiful. Looking swordfish. So now we've got the fish nice and seared on all sides. Add in some time. Ah, ah, ah. Is swordfish a fish that you can leave raw in the middle or no? Yep, you can cook it to medium. Final piece of the dish cooked. Now we just gotta cut this up, and then we can move on to plating and making these dishes look like something beautiful. All right, so how am I cutting this, Kyle? You're gonna wait and let it rest. What are you sticking in there? This is a cake tester. Essentially just uh, letting it sit in there, and we're gonna test the temperature on the inside of it. So it's been resting for about five minutes. So checking the temp of it still, just it's going to continue to rest and the outside temperature is going to come into the center and essentially warm through the middle. Okay. Uh, so just continuously checking the inside tell, you temperature. You can tell that just by putting it under your chin, what temperature yeah, this, is Yeah, there's like um, sensitive spots on your body. So underneath of your lip or the bottom side of your wrist here, you can use to just kind of like put the cake tester there just to feel it. And that's just what, from years of experience? Yeah, just a long time of it cooking proteins and doing things like that. Swordfish done. So now, just gotta plate everything and make it look pretty. Kyle brought some fancy plates to help really make the dishes look good. So we're gonna plate them on these. So I think actually with this first plate, I'm gonna let Kyle plate it, show me how he does his thing, and then I'll plate the next one. What are you doing, you're rolling them up? So just kind of like uh, maneuvering them so that they will look nice when they go onto the plate here. So with plating, it's all like creative, right? You kind of yeah. just like get to, get to like, use. It's more of like an art. Yeah, you get I to use a little bit. Art. All of it is. You get to use a different part of your brain that is part of the plating side. All of it is expressing your creativity, but this is just to a different extent. And what are those edible flowers? So, got a, a mixture of just like small garnish greens and uh, flowers and things like that. This one going down is chervil. Got a couple leaves of red vein sorrel here. And then we're going to go into a few marigold leaves. So that's the plate itself, and this is what you would start with. And then if you're at the restaurant going on this, the chef would call in to fire it. You would kind of pre-plate this, and then right when that fire ticket happens is when you would finish it off with your, in this case, the tomato water that we have. So you're pouring that on the side of it? This is going to get poured on the side so you don't disturb any of the garnish or anything that you put on the top here. Working with a little bit of an unlevel surface yeah. area here. <laughs> the, van is, the van is pulling it all to one side. <laughs> I'll just add a little bit more, so no worries. So this tomato water, you get that like fresh like flavor of tomato without the actual use of the uh, whole tomato itself on the plate. And this is the, this is the green oil. We this is the, the green oil, yeah. So this is the stuff that we made in the professional kitchen with Kyle earlier this morning. Wow, that looks crazy. 
And that's it. That's it? That would be your dish. So this is plate number one. Kyle, give us a quick breakdown of everything that's on here. So you have a little bit of fatty tuna. You get it stressed essentially with a little bit of a tomato water. You have a couple fresh raspberries and then a basil oil and a few fine herbs. There. That looks like a gourmet meal. Now that we've got that plated, we can move on to the entree. So this is going to be our main course, AKA the swordfish. Kyle has given me some tweezers to use. <laughs> You're gonna cut a few even pieces so we can it's cut. How thick? About there. Okay. Yep. Oh, that looks so beautiful. There you go, one stroke. Beautiful. Consomme, throw it in the bowl. Now, you could drop in one piece of fish into there. Right in the center? Yep. One piece of fish. Keep it centered. And then you can hit it with a little bit of that chicken fat. This is a, this is a chicken fat we rendered off camera. I forgot to get it, but it was from the skin of all the chicken that we cut up earlier. Use a spoon, do it like I did for the green oil. Just okay. kind of like use it and then just like go around. And then on the top, something I've never had before that I've been very excited to try because, I mean, it's caviar. Who hasn't wanted to try it? So a big fat scoop? Oh yeah. Like that? More. More? There you go. All right, so how am I supposed to get this off onto there? You can either use the other spoon or you can use your finger and kind of slide it off onto there. Okay. How was that? <laughs> that looks crazy. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That's the dish. Okay. Sometimes you don't need a lot. You know, it just takes there. like a nice basic good cooking. Here's dish number two. That looks crazy, a lot of bubbles. We've got our entree, we've got our appetizer. appetizer. I think we're gonna eat those real quick and then we're gonna come back into the van, make some dessert. We've got our entree right here and our beautiful appetizer. The appetizer looks crazy. It's a little bit uneven, as I said, with being in a van, some of the water sloshing to one side, but I mean, that is a beautiful five-star dish. So let's dig in. So just go for a scoop. I would get a raspberry in there and you can maybe break a raspberry in half. I'll get a raspberry, a piece of the fish, and then some of the water oh, yeah. liquid. There you go. Cheers. The raw tuna is something for him to come over, but we'll see if it happens. Honestly, it really wasn't that bad. In terms of raw tuna, that was a very good dish, but like, I thought I didn't like raw tuna. That was like very good. That was really good. What do you think? I think that's great. It's very refreshing. Yeah. Very like light. It'd be good on like a summer day or something. Mm. Tomato water is like so good too. Yeah. It's so pure. It's just literally like the flavor, yeah, wow. like concentrated tomato, but just like you're not eating a tomato. It's cool. Oh my gosh. I can like drink that. <laughs> Dish number two, swordfish, caviar, consomme, rendered fat, broken it up. Let's give it a go. Get a little bit of everything in there. Oh, I dropped the caviar. Okay, get it. This is gonna be my first time having caviar. Cheers. Our fish is really good. I couldn't really taste the caviar. Just get it on its own. Yeah. Mm. Salty. Little yeah. Pops. Or like fish umami. Yeah. It definitely it has. It definitely has a lot more flavor than I thought. It definitely didn't taste like I was expecting it to taste. It was actually very tasty. All caviars taste different too. So really? it's not. Yeah. What kind of caviar is this? This is a Dranky caviar. Mm. That's actually a lot better than I thought it was gonna be, like the caviar itself. The dish is amazing. I mean, this is easily one of the best dishes I've ever had. I've never been to a Michelin star restaurant, so this is as close as I've gotten. So, now that we've finished our entree, an appetizer, we're gonna whip up some dessert. I think that was one of the best meals I've ever had. That was so <laughs> it's good. It's hardly a meal. Well, Just a couple. best tasting experience I've ever had. Dessert should be pretty easy. Um, oh, let's check the uh, gelatin. So this is that thing we made earlier. Ooh, nice and gelatinous. So we've got our ice cream that we made earlier. We've got some granola that Kyle just had left over. And then the gelatin that we also made earlier. So the blueberry jelly, it's just gonna go on the bottom. Essentially, it's just like a hard set jelly just to give like a little bit of a texture. 
and then you're going to have the crunchiness from the granola here. A little bit of ice cream. Fancy scooped. Beautiful. Just a little bit of garnish. That's it? That's it. Just a little, little Beautiful. It's so cute. <laughs> Alright, let's give it a try. So, this one would be more of like a palate cleanser at the restaurant. Uh, it would be plated a little different, a couple different components, but something a little bright, a little uh, pop of acid, and something to kind of break up your palate from having a bunch of rich things or proteins and things like that to get you ready for dessert. There we go. Our ice cream dessert. That is so good. It's really good with the lemon too. Yeah. Because we were going to do coconut, but we decided to do lemon. I think it's really good. Plays a little bit better with the mm -hmm. blueberry. Wow. Definitely some of the best meals that I've had probably in my life. Shout out to Kyle for coming out here, cooking in the van, helping me make a uh, Michelin star meal because it was absolutely delicious. And also to say thank you. Got you something from the uh, knife shop that we went to. You didn't get the green one, dude. <laughs> We did not. Really? Holy yeah. When we were in the knife shop, Kyle pointed at this knife and said he's been looking at it for a while. Thanks, dude. This no is so nice. <laughs> I can't wait. I expect you to use it in your I restaurant. Will. Thanks for coming on, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, for thank real. You. I've been looking at it, contemplating buying it for so long. I'm like, I'm not going to get it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Why would I get it? Why would I get it? There you go. Now you have it. But anyways, we have got a lot of cleaning up to do. As always, I truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button, and I will catch you guys next time.